whatever, um, that John gave last time. So it's like a kid play with blocks, right? So the CSS and the HTML are the blocks, and JavaScript is the kid that's kind of moving things around, like changing things up. Um, you can like buy a new and throw away old blocks by creating and deleting like HTML elements on the fly, and you can stack blocks, like you just change the um, structure of the HTML code. <coughs> Oh yeah, and you basically change the HTML and CSS in any way you want. Like you could just like completely change up the page if you want to. Like change every single element. Like you do something and the JavaScript just, like changes everything. So you literally can do anything to the page that you want. It's not limited. Well, it is limited in some ways. But. Okay, so how does JavaScript do it? Um, so basically, the browser represents the web page as what's called a DOM tree, and DOM stands for doc, uh, Document Object Model, and so when you guys saw this, remember when we talked about nesting and like children and parents um, for HTML elements? It'll be kind of clear when I uh, talk about trees. So um, for example, if you have your HTML file, everything's inside the HTML file, and then you have your head and then your body, and then you have these like these nested divs, right? So inside the div you have like headers and paragraph things. So what this looks like to the browser is it makes this tree. Makes this tree. So the big parent at the top is and it kind of looks like a tree, right? With these like I don't know, like leaves or something? I don't know. Looks like a tree to me. Um, so the very like major parent person is the HTML tag. As you can see here, everything is nested inside inside that. And then inside its children are the head and body. Um, in addition, a little off of this should be over here. So head and body, and you see inside head it has title and so on. So it's like it's very clear what the parent and child relationships are just by looking at the tree. And this is how JavaScript um, it kind of traverses the tree to manipulate these elements. Any questions? Is the tree concept, I know like I'm a CS major, so the tree concept is very familiar to me, but let me know if you're confused, because I know it may not be familiar to most people. Um, so I mean, I understand the concept of the tree and things being nested, okay. but I'm a little unclear when you say, what you mean when you say JavaScript transfers versus the tree. Um, the tree. Like when it's looking for the elements, it'll go down like, so it looks for head and then, so what, for example, like if you have a, just like CSS does, right? So if you have a CSS selector that says like, I'm looking for a paragraph inside of a body. It'll go down here. It'll say, "Oh, here's a." Or, or sorry, if, it, if you have a CSS selector that has, is looking for, for example, a paragraph inside of a div, it'll go down, like traverse, like go down these like links, and then it'll see a div. Okay, and it'll look inside the body. That's what I mean by traverse. Just like goes down um, with this structure. So it's, it's not like scanning like the whole file like sequentially. It goes down like it opens each child like in this manner. Does that make sense? Oh, it's hard to describe CS. Um, okay, so uh, I guess this is just what I what I just said. Each HTML element is a node on the tree, so this little box. Um, its container, what has a link to what's above it, like what its little arrow tube above it is, is its parent, and anything under it is its children. So, for example, here's a I guess sideways tree. So um, each object has attributes. Um, so here's an image object and it has attributes. Remember when we went over HTML during the first lecture? Um, you have like image and then inside that you have like source equals, you can have like width equals or height equals, whatever, those are called attributes. So here's source and it has a value of this. And you can also have a, um, an attribute of style, which then has an attribute of border and which has a value of whatever. So the nesting goes pretty deep down. Oh wait, I forgot to give you a candy. Wait, do you want a candy? Uh, sure. Okay. Incentive. Don't forget that we have candy. Okay, so um, here's the basic coding flow in jQuery. Um, a lot of you probably know this already if you did the lab, but there's still some people that are confused, so I just want to go over it one more time. So um, what you first see in jQuery, so if you want to do anything to an element, you first have to select it, right? And jQuery is super nice. Um, where it gives you like basically CSS selectors, so you guys learned all this, so you should should know how to do this. So except it uses this like instead of using um, like how you would have in a CSS file where you have like some selector and then curly braces denoting the body, you would instead select it using this dollar sign and print um, syntax. So you put the CSS selector string in here, just like you would select. So it's exactly like you would select um, CSS using the dot for class or hash for ID or just like the plain name for um, HTML element. You can also chain function calls. Um, and this is kind of confusing. I think I'll go over it later. So for example, if you had if you selected this um, paragraph element, you can say dot CSS, and then without saying 
without selecting the dollar, um, the dollar sign P thing again, you can also say dot click and then dot remove. So these are all act, uh, act, acting upon this P element, but it's it's chained upon the first one. So you have to write like dollar P CSS, and then on the next line dollar P click, and on the next line dollar P remove. You can just put them all in the same line. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, the first is selecting that paragraph element. But yeah. The second dollar is is that selecting uh, an element within the paragraph element? Or? No. So this um, this method, and we'll go over what functions and methods are um, in a couple of slides. It's actually returning this element again. So it's as if you had said p css and then p again and then click and then p again and then remove. Okay. They're just so all acting upon the same thing. So this the the, the thing that says this just means p. Because there's a dollar sign in this, and I associate oh. this. Uh, yeah, we will go over this, because this is a callback. So it's within this function. So what you're actually saying is, it is referring to P, okay. but it's, uh, it's kind of, like, you wouldn't do this normally. It's only because it's inside a function. But we'll okay. go over that when we go over callbacks. Yeah. OK, so this is? Yeah, this just is ignore this, this. OK. Yeah, so these are all, like, kind of, so you could say, like, um, dollar P, CSS, and then dollar P, do whatever. It's a shortcut. Okay. Okay. So, um, what I said before, kind of. So, let's say you use CSS selectors um, in conjunction with their dollar um, tag kind of thing to select elements. So, dollars are uh, hashtag my element is an element with ID equals something, and then just using this pure image thing gives us an array of all of the images on the page. And I, what I mean array, I mean like a list. So. This gives you all of the images on the page because there might be more than one that's an image. But remember, why will this give us only one element and it, as opposed to a list of elements, in theory? Yes. Yes, ID is unique. So there can't possibly, in your pages, right, there can't possibly be more than one element with the ID of something because ID is supposed to be unique. So while for classes and um, using these um, element names, um, they can re return a list of things. The ID will, in theory, only return one, because there's only supposed to be one. So it's, the behavior is kind of undefined. If you have more than one element with the ID of something, like, sometimes it'll return like one thing, sometimes it'll return like all of them, but like, you're not supposed to, so don't use that. Um, OK, yeah, I'll this. Are there any questions? <coughs> Did you guys all do the lab, by the way, that is due today? Who has finished the library? Uh, good number. There's still people. So hopefully this lecture will help. OK, so yeah. So what you can do with these kinds of, once you select an element, what can you do? So you can change element attributes. You guys hit, um, hit on this during the lab. So I'm just going to breeze through these. So set attributes. And remember, attributes are like source, height, width, whatever. So you can set things by just saying the name of the attribute followed by whatever you want that value to be. And you can also um, send in a list of things. So for example, this one, um, this attribute, you're only sending in two values. The comma denotes like, it means you're sending in like this one and this one. So you, you separate them by commas. But this one actually has this weird curly brace thing. And this is called a dictionary. And uh, you're actually giving it a list of things that you want to change. So in this first example, you only want to change the source. So you pass in this string uh, the text source and then whatever text you want to um, send in afterwards. But with this brace notation, you can actually say source equals something or like colon something and then separate that with a comma and then change another attribute too. So for example, here you're changing the whole attribute. So, yeah. Um, so the the uh, the format of dot like some keyword and then you know separate parentheses that can be used to both. Um, as like a function, like to change something, or as kind of a filter to, to search for like particular attributes? Um, you actually can't search for things. This is, all, this is only for setting. Alternatively, you, you could get the attribute by just having one argument. So if you just said adder and then source, that would return the source of that thing. Or if you had two arguments, you could set it. But there's no way to really filter. You'd have to write like custom JavaScript to kind of search through for a certain thing. Wait, so then what, is, what does it do exactly then if it's not filtering out the things with that attribute? It sets it. So this is filtering out. So when you say dollar um, uh, hash my image, that like I guess in a way filters out everything, and it only gives you the one that's the that particular element. And this is actually changing. So these are all manipulations. 
Oh, so these are setting the attributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay. like actually changing the element, what the element like looks like. Yeah. Can you change that element as soon as the page is loaded? Um. Versus like working on anything. Yes. Well, if you have it inside the document ready, like that which you did in your lab, it'll do as soon as the um, you'll do it as soon as the page is loaded. But you, if you have it as part of like a callback, it'll only do it as part of that callback. Okay, callback like the mouse over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So why is it that we don't like make the source in a string inside the dictionary? I don't know. It's just that way. I think these are already like keyed by these kind of values. It's like a weird thing. So I don't really weird. know. Okay. Yeah, you can you can just use this as if it was like a variable, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you have questions about this notation? Could you use the dictionary with just one entry? Yes. So you could it could be used for just you could have just one inside or you could have multiple. But this is like if you didn't want to do that and you just you know you're gonna only change one, you can just do it this way as well. Yeah, those are similar. So CSS is basically the same thing, and you can use this dictionary notation for it as well. And this is, oh, this changes the CSS. For example, for before, these um, adder, adder properties belong to HTML elements only. Um, so you couldn't do like like, um, like margin or something, because that's not an HTML element. But um, for CSS elements, this is what you, you guys have been doing all along. You can use any CSS property in here, like background image, background position, etc. And this Yeah. Mean for the values. Yeah. Oh yeah. So good point. You could you could also have quotes around here, but they're optional. Okay. Um, yeah. What do you mean by um, I understand set properties, but then what does get properties do? Oh, it gives you. So for example, if you wanted to say dot CSS and then without putting this red thing, just say color, it'll return. Oh, yeah, sorry, right here. If you just wanted to say this, it'll return the color of what that H1 is supposed to be. So instead of setting it, you're like, okay, I want to know, like if you want to know what color it is first, before you set it, um, you can do this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any other questions? This is very pertinent to your lab and mini project that is coming out today, so ask questions. Okay, so uh, went over this before, you can add classes or remove classes, and this is really useful so you don't, okay, so I guess in some cases, like if you wanted to hard code everything, you don't need this, but it's really easy. For example, um, if you wanted to like have, if you wanted to change like the color, the border, the background, the image of like a certain element, you could, you could have all of those like CSS calls, like um, here, you could say change this, change this, change this. Or you could just um, have them all belong to a class and then change the class on it. It's really, um, it's a really like easy and a simpler way to switch out a bunch of properties at once. Does that make sense to everyone? Because in your CSS file, you can have a class and then you like add what properties you should apply to that certain class. So instead of using JavaScript to set each CSS property individually, you can apply a class to it or remove a class, and it'll set all of them at once, basically. So using the CSS to take care of this in the JavaScript. Some people are confused. Okay, I'm going on. Okay, so this is what everyone's pretty much interested in, um, event handling. So as you might have noticed already from the lab, um, there are certain things you can have the browser kind of listen for. So this is called um, event handling. So for example, if you wanted something to happen, if you wanted like an alert to happen when you clicked this, whatever, this element with the ID block, you could attach a click handler to it um, by saying dot click and then passing it an anonymous function. Um, and similarly for, Crossovers. And there are other um, kind of event handling things like we can like listen for when a key is pressed, when a key is unpressed, when a key is down, like on focus on blur, which is like when um, when text fields have the focus on them, like you have your little blinking thing um, inside of a inside of a text field or something like that. And um, so, does, how many people know about functions or methods? Okay, so um, really quick review for those of you that who don't know, because it's pretty confusing at first. Um, so JavaScript functions look like this. You say function, you name your function something, and you pass in some arguments. And it, the important thing to know is uh, it doesn't do anything until it's called. So it's just a it's like a chunk of code that's sitting there, and unless you call it, it doesn't do anything. 
Um, and it really helps for controlled execution, like you can control when something happens, and um, code reusability. So instead of having this like chunk of things, like having to write out, like copy and pasting this chunk of things that happen, you can instead stick it inside of a function, and then just call that function every time. Does that make sense? It's kind of like the CSS thing, right? Like, remember in the very beginning, why, we, why do we use CSS? Instead of having to, um, like, setting color and everything, and if you want to change that color, you need to change the element, like, 15 times. You just have one thing and you change that, just like here. So if you have some similarly, like, if you have some code that does the exact same thing and you copy and paste it 15 times, and you want to change one thing, it'd be better to change something inside of the function instead of having to change that one line 15 times. So um, here's sort of something to help you uh, with what functions are. So if you've ever done algebra, you have this, these functions, right? So like f of x equals x squared plus x plus 3. Um, so what a function looks like is you basically take these inputs, like you're taking x, you do something to it, and you return an output, which is f of x. And more um, elements, or and functions can have more than one input, like f of x, f of x and y equals x whatever plus y whatever. So just imagine a function is like that. It takes some input, it does something with them, and it spits out an answer. Um, we also have anonymous functions, which are what um, you pass to callbacks. So anonymous functions are basically like you can assign it to. It's basically a function without a name, because that's what anonymous means, right? So before we had that function definition, where we had function and then a name. So now we're not, we're excluding that name. So you could either assign it to a variable, so you can call it later. So this is, this is sort of, I, there's some like nuances to what this does, but it's basically the same thing as doing a name function. So you can say var like eat cake non equals this function, and you say like you can alert or whatever, uh, do whatever inside, and then you call it just like this, just like you would a regular function. Or you could pass it directly as a function argument, which is a callback. So what we saw before was um, having some selector and then dot click, and you pass in this anonymous function, right? So this is exactly what was over here. So you can also say like uh, dollar sign um, target dot click and then pass in this method, or you could just bypass the whole naming thing um, altogether and put the function directly in there. Yes. So for sometimes when you make that variable and, and then associate it with the function, um, like you can you can dot something it after, right? Like if you have like some variable named like some variable name equal to some set and then you can like dot it after. Do you do the same thing with the function with the name? Then make myself uh like put a dot like dot something after this? Yeah, so like I all I know is that like those variables are so you can kind of like manipulate it after. Can you do the same thing with the previous slide with the function? Because you, you name the function but you didn't make it a variable. Can you do something similar with that one? So I think uh yeah, so you're asking basically about where you assign a variable to some selection of HTML elements that's selected by your query, right? No. So like you... I'll just ask later. I think that's okay. okay. a very specific right. question. Yes. So in that example, is eat, kick, and non, is that a function or is that like a function call that's like stored for later? It's a function, and then you can call it later. Like what so, do you mean a function call that's okay, stored? Okay, so, okay, so here. Well, that's a good one. So you're assigning it to function, but function's not taking any arguments. So if function were to take arguments, would you give the arguments at that point, or would you just use? You give arguments at you. So if this had x and y, you would say e k and on, and then. Okay. Do you have any insights to when you would use this? Yeah. Like, 
x equals to e k non, and I'll that'll put whatever the result of the function is inside that variable. Yeah. So <laughs> it's getting very CSC, so please ask if you have any questions. It's very hard. So I guess uh, this slide two slides back. So when you um, do something, is that not the name? That's not you define. Oh, that is the name. So this is a name. So what's function? the difference between assigning a variable and just giving it a name? Uh, there's some really like there's some really subtle thing that I forgot. But if you generally, if you want to have it named something, you should do this way. Like the other, you remember what it is? There's some really really subtle thing that happens. Something with like the execution order or like scopes or something. <laughs> you can look it up if you're interested. Just like be like, oh, what's the difference between like doing a name function versus assigning an anonymous function into a variable? And there's some like blog post online that details what it is. Yeah. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Any other questions? CS is fun, right? I hope this didn't like turn people off to like CS or something. Okay, so um, wait, we do this already. Okay, never mind, we did this already. Okay, so that's your very quick introduction to um, JavaScript in general. And what jQuery does is jQuery is actually a library um, for JavaScript. So if you're doing, if you're trying to do animations or like traversing in like vanilla, which is just regular JavaScript, it'd be like pretty difficult because there aren't a lot of helper functions and you have to manually do everything by yourself. Like you can say like, get um, document, like find, element or whatever the method is and then like individually set the different properties. But jQuery actually makes it really easy for you. For example, they have like animate, so okay, here you can do things that you can traverse, you can add, you can like look at his children, find the first of things, the last of things, find parents, um, you can have manipulation like adding class, removing class, appending, like removing things and then getting values of things. Um, these are all like more than trivial in vanilla JavaScript. So jQuery is really easy way to do these things without having to dive into like the details of um, how browsers and like the DOM structure works. And you can also have effects, which are really cool. I'm going to detail some effects if you haven't seen them already. So here are a couple things. So um, as I said before, like you can use jQuery not only for doing effects and like manipulation, you can also like get values of things. So here are different um, paragraphs on the right. And if I want to know the number of paragraphs, you can just say, you can say that size, so like getting use this div and then get the size of it, and that'll return seven because there's seven paragraphs. And this can be useful in um, places. And you can animate things, so slide out, slide in. So cool animations like this, uh, which make web apps. I'm, I'm sure you guys have all seen these web apps that have like cool animation, like when you do something like things like highlight and like slide up, and it's very entertaining. Um, add or remove text. You can append text to the end of things. You can remove things. So this is useful, um, especially in Ajax, which we'll learn shortly. You can make things disappear. I don't know how to get it back. Um, change things, so I'm changing the classes of things. If you notice all these things just turn into like italic and have this color applied to it. Um, by the way, these are online, so you just go to docsjQuery.com and they have examples. And you can change the CSS, so I'm adding classes, which makes it this brown thing. So jQuery can do a lot of things that are um, not so trivial if you do them in regular JavaScript. So, um, 
action. Yeah, we'll do this. But um, so there are two different important methods for um, sending like different types of requests. The first one is get, and the other one is post. So get is a get request will um, generate a parameters driven URL. Oh, let's get these. Um, what that basically means is when you make a get request, it sends all the parameters via the URL. And what I mean by this is, like, you have this URL and you want to send it some information. So you basically send it these, like, key value pairs. So you say, like, key one equals value one, and key two equals value two, and key three, and blah, 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 blah. So, like, so, um, oh yeah, you need a special mark. This is really important. So you have, like, if you wanted to post, well, if Facebook had their, like, posting messages thing in, as, a, as a get request, um, you would say, like, facebook.com, like, slash, like, create message or something, and then question mark, like, name equals Amber, or like, from equals Amber, like, to equals John or something, and the message equals something. Does that make sense? Right. So, um, with those, like, if Facebook were used that type of service subject, then theoretically, couldn't, like, if somebody knew the exact chain of words and whatnot, couldn't they, like, send it the server request to change your, um, change your status update to whatever? Yeah, usually they have some kind of like, um, usually you send like the current, like you, usually you have some kind of verification where the server knows like who you are. So you can't like, it's usually more authenticated. Than that, but that's one of the, that's why, um, that's one of the like security pitfalls of using GET. Um, if you basically, if you're using a server with like a GET request styled um, server, Intake, I can't speak properly. Um, you can, you have a lot, there's a lot of security things, right? You can send particular things if you know what this chain of things are. Um, what are other security bad things? I'm not gonna articulate my words today. <coughs> what else, like, like if you send things over the internet and you're requesting this thing, okay, say I'm logging in, right? So I say, and the, the login thing is a, um, is a, is a get request? <laughs> Why can I talk? And so basically, when you do the get request, your website will send the server user equals something, password equals something, right? And what's wrong with that? It's plain text, and you can read it, right? So that's really bad, especially over like a security Did you have a question? Oh, okay. So you're just hanging out like this. Huh? Yeah, and it's visible in the browser. So when you send something over that network, like this will actually appear in your URL. Um, yeah, so each parameter is formulated by a key value pair. So key equals something, value equals something. Or key one equals value, key two equals value, and so on. And you can have as many as you want, but I believe there is a limit to how many characters you can have in your URL. 2,000. 2,000, so um, Any questions about get requests? This can be. Okay, so here's an example. So, okay, so this is what your lab is gonna, or not your lab. There's no lab today, but there is gonna be your mini project, which is kind of like the Ajax lab. Um, so we have this domain set up for you, which takes in um, get requests. So, um, let's see, I'll show you. Here's John example, John's example of the lab that you're gonna do. Oh, John, thanks. <laughs> so this is what you just said before. <laughs> so if you know the, I'll show everyone. If you know the um, the specific parameters of the like of the get request, you can basically like emulate anyone or do anything you want if there's no like authentication behind it, right? So 